Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. So many people have so many sicknesses, and so many of these people have tried everything the medical world has, everything that they've read about, read books up to here about healing, and they're stuck. They believe it's true, but they're stuck. Well, my guest has so many incurable people healed that 16 hospitals and their doctors send incurable, the ones that medical science has given up on, patients to her. And she says healing is simple. Would you like it to be simple? Yeah. Get unstuck. <laughs> Tens of thousands have been healed under your ministry. Mm -hmm. Many miracles, many bona fide miracles. Mm -hmm. But you're special. You must have special gifts and powers. I'm not special at all. What I do, anyone can do. Anyone can do. You've I, proven it. Yeah, You've I, trained anyone I've trained, to do I've it. I've trained anyone and they can do it. Well, you say something that some people get upset with Sandra. Mm -hmm. uh, you say healing is simple. Yeah, I do. But, so how come when I ask audiences, how many of you need to be healed, 99% of the hands go up and that extra 1%, they're just liars. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, the biggest problem, Sid, is that most people are trying to get from God something God has already given. And so they are, they are begging God, pursuing God, crying out to God, reading books, trying methods, trying this, trying that, to get God to do for them what God has already done. So therefore, they put all of it on them. It ends up being a works mentality. You said one of the keys is to fall in love with God. Elaborate on that for well, me. I actually tell folks this, and it's the truth. If I can get you to fall in love with Jesus, that's my job, to get you to fall so in love with Him that you just take from Him what He has already given you. Most people know about God and don't really know God. They don't know what God's done. They don't know what God's provided. They don't know the blessings of God. They don't know what God has already, as I said, given to them. So if I can get you to fall in love with Him, just from His Word, get you to fall in love with Him, you will automatically be able to take what somebody you love has given you. You know, a lot of people approach this as almost formula. Yeah. And that is, to me, that is the missing ingredient. It's not formula. It's not formula It's at all. God of love. Right. Mm -hmm. And getting to know Him. Mm -hmm. um, you like to teach a lot about Proverbs 420. You've got to get in the Word. You've got to understand what the Bible has to say about healing. And when the Bible says that healing, that the Word of God is medicine, then you will take a scripture. He sent his word and healed me. You no, know, my translation doesn't say, in that Proverbs 4, it doesn't uh -huh. say medicine, but I know that's what the original Hebrew yes, says. Yes, it says medicine. Absolutely. It's medicine for you. And if you keep that word and keep applying, like you do medicine, take it morning, noon, and night. You take the word of God and you talk to yourself what the Bible says to you until you get it said from your head down into your spirit. Now, people get stuck, and I know we, we've talked about this a lot. 
People get stuck because it's stuck in their head. They, they know how to parrot it back. They know how to say back to someone what the Word of God has said. They know how to parrot what a book has said. They know how they watch somebody, but they don't know it's not real to them. So all I have to do is have a pain. All I have to do is let something change, and I automatically go with the problem instead of what Jesus has said. But if I believe, if I believe Him, if I really believe him, then I'm going to start saying back to myself, well, you know, this is what the Word of God says. What am I going to do? Who am I going to believe here? You know, the Bible says this. My symptoms say this. You know, we tell people sometimes to take their doctor's report, for instance. You take your doctor's report and then take the Word of God and put it on top of the doctor's report. Now, you got to believe one or the other. You're going to believe one or the other. And the one you give all your attention to is the one you're going to believe. So you've got to give your attention. Everybody, everybody here, everybody you know who needs healing are begging God to do something that he's already done. Every well, person you know. Well, tell me about that man in a coma that your team, just pe yeah. not yourself, people you there, just trained, right? yeah. what happened? And when the man was in the coma, had very little bit of time to, uh, to live at all, went in there, his wife was there, and, and uh, I, I mentioned Hello, that because John. she thought they were crazy. They went in there, three or four people went in there, and they began you to speak. To Remember, you. we don't speak to the flesh, we speak to the spirit. We go in because you're a spirit, you have a body that you live in, and that's what's sick. And you have a soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions, and it's your thinking that's messing up your body. So you got to get your thinking right. So they go in and they talk to the man as if he were not in a coma. They begin to say what the Word says over And by the way, your spirit can hear no matter what's no matter going what. on in the physical. So you're talking to the spirit. And so you go and talk to him, you know, uh, hello, John, his name happened to be John. Hello, John, you know, I'm so-and-so, and, and the Bible says this, and by the stripes of Jesus you're healed, and, and God sent his Word and healed you. He himself took, you know, all your sickness and all your diseases, and you begin to speak to that spirit. Spirit, spirit, come on, come on, come out of that coma, come on, bring yourself and let the healing power of God push out the sickness. Because, we, oh, I love saying this, the healing power of God said, when you got born again, the healing power of God, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, moved inside of you, so you have inside of you right now all of the healing power of God already in you. Every, it's in you now. When you got born again, all of God came in you, which means all of His healing power came in you. But I've got to get it from the inside to my body. My body's sick. My spirit's not. All right, I want to talk about that when we come back. Uh, but what happened to the man in the coma? The man came out of the coma days later, weeks later. Oh, thank you, Lord. Showed up at the healing center, walked down the street, and the person who happened to say, hello, my name is thus and so, well, he, as she was walking down the street, he said, hello, Velda. Her Hi. name was Velda. Hello, Velda. My, my name's name John. John, which meant he heard her in that coma. My goodness. <laughs> Look, when we come back, I want Sandra to, step by step, tell me what she had to do not when someone else needed a creative miracle, when she needed a creative miracle. Anyone can teach it. Anyone can speak a good game. What happens when you need a creative miracle? Be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Have you ever wondered why your prayers aren't being answered or why God uses others in the supernatural but not you? Sid Roth wants to help mentor you to walk in the supernatural of God to make sure that you receive your healing, your miracle, and your breakthrough. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. It's Supernatural by New York Times bestselling author Sid Roth, now available everywhere. We now return to It's Supernatural. So, as I was saying, Dr. Kennedy does not just teach by what she's learned. She actually has put this into practice in her own life. Uh, that was an awful thing that happened to you. Your nice little doggy bit off your lip. Right. <laughs> I mean, now, that is not a cool thing to happen. No, that is not. Uh, uh, and so, uh, did you have a have the lip in your hand, or? That's the first question the nurse asked me in the emergency room. Where's your lip? I didn't know it was gone. 
uh, the, the dog, as I bent down, the dog jumped up accident, and the mouth of the dog, being a shelter with a little pointed lip like that, closed here and closed down from my nose to this side over here, took that lip off. I didn't know what it was because it's so much blood. I had no mm -hmm. idea. So I just grabbed a towel, put it on it, called some friends, said, I think I need to go to the emergency room. First thing they said to me is, where is your lip? Well, I had no idea. I didn't know if the dog had eaten it or where it was. I didn't know where the oh. lip was. Now, now you're, you're, you're talking um, kind of up, which I understand why, because I know what happened. Yeah. However, at that time, I don't think you were so up. Oh, I wasn't up at all. <laughs> I mean, here I am, you know. Oh, uh, no, I was horrified. Horrified. I would imagine. Yeah, I was absolutely you're horrified. You're deformed now. I'm deformed. And so they told me I needed plastic surgeon. The plastic surgeon came in, and he instantly said, I can't do anything. He said, if it was the bottom lip, it would reproduce itself. This is the top lip, it won't reproduce itself. Mm. And he said, I can't do anything. He says, it's ragged, I've got to cut it again, and then pull it together. And uh, he said, we have to go to surgery right now, and then you have to have three to six more surgeries. And I instantly said, I will never have another surgery. And he just looked at me like I was crazy. And I said, uh, and on top of that, this is my lip, I'm going to pray for you. So I took, took his hands, never met this guy in my life, took his hand, prayed for him, went into the, uh, to the surgery, woke up in the middle of him sewing up my lip with black gut stuff. <laughs> As he's sewing up my lip, I heard him tell the nurse, I don't know why I didn't do this. I normally sew the lip totally up, come back three weeks later, slit it. And I'm thinking, I'm a preacher, don't do that. I'm thinking all this, you know, can't right. say anything. And, uh, uh, and I said, thank God, that that's why you didn't sew it up. When I came out, my nose was sitting over here on this side because he'd pulled it. They had to pull it. So I'm whopsided like this, Sid. I'm whopsided. The only part of my lip that's open is a little teeny hole right over here. And I could just talk with a microphone like, like this on this side. You could yeah, but you're not going to talk on a microphone with it. I had a you're healing looking. explosion 10 days later. I had a healing meeting. I know, but don't you know what you look like? Yes, I did. Okay. I knew. <laughs> and when I went in, the first thing I said was, okay, everybody look, you know, this is the way it is. And what I ended up doing was I went home and I got all the pictures of me smiling because he told me I would never smile again. They'd never be able to see my teeth ever again. And uh, he, I got every picture of me smiling, plastered it all over all the mirrors, all over the, uh, in the kitchen, everywhere. And then every time I'd go by a mirror or go by something, I'd speak to that lip and I would command it in the name of Jesus to move. I'd command it, it maybe 30 times a day. I command you to, he said it wouldn't move, remember? It couldn't move. And I said, I command it to move. When I'd go back to see him, I'd, I kept saying, no, I will never have another surgery. I will never have a surgery. And he kept trying, he brought out a book with cleft lips and all kinds of deformities. And he said to me, I want you to look at this. I said, I will never look at it. I don't want to get it in my mind. I will never look at it. I won't look at anything except pictures of me smiling and what I want this lip to do. And the day that I had the healing explosion that I looked so bad, I turned my back to the congregation. And I said, it's every man for himself. I turned my back to the congregation and I said, I command you to move. And God is my witness, I've never had a surgery, not one single thing. And see, I think you can count my teeth pretty well. I see. <laughs> uh, well, you talk about two things. I want you to briefly comment on it. Persistence. Yes and actually acting on the Word, not just thinking right. about what the Bible right. says. Remember, it matters what you think. That's why I wouldn't get that book in front of me. I wouldn't get the pictures in mm -hmm. my mind. It matters. And when I made the statement earlier that I'm aware that all of God's healing power is inside of me, and the only thing that's blocking God's healing power from getting to my body, that's anybody who's listening. The only thing that's stopping it is my mind, what I'm thinking. So I've got to persistently Stay tuned to the Word of God until it gets past my mind into my heart that I believe it more than what I see. Yeah, but what if it wasn't you? What if someone's listening to us right now and they've done it all wrong? They have a picture in their mind of them dying yeah. of, of a dread disease. Right. Uh, what can they do? 
They can do exactly what I did. They have, they've got to change their thinking. The thinking is the, is the process. You've got to change your thinking. They need to start visualizing themselves. They need to see themselves healed. They need to see if they are skinny and emaciated, they need to see their body uh, getting weight on it again. They need to believe that Word of God that it's released in their body and that there's something happening in their body. And what it is, is the power of God that God has released in you. They've got to just speak to that body, keep speaking to it. Uh, you know, say I, say, I can't lift my shoulder. I command it in the name of Jesus. Shoulder, you will lift. You will in the name of Jesus. And whatever, you know, the number one healings that we see are cancer. Number, percentage wise of cancer. And we curse it, we curse it, and we tell that cancer it will die in Jesus' name. And we keep, we keep seeing it go, seeing it go. And the secret, you release your faith by praise and gratitude. So I have to say, Lord, I'm so thankful healing's inside of me already. Yeah. I thank you it's in me. Isn't that wonderful? I thank you it's in me. And Father, I just release it now. So what you're telling me, if I'm understanding you right, uh, it says in Proverbs that the Word is medicine. You take as much wet medicine yes. as you can. Yes. If you knew that you had a medicine that would heal you and you could have as much as you want, what would you do? When we come back, I'm going to find out what a woman did that was diagnosed with cancer and got a hold of this teaching. Be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! Call now and get Dr. Sandra Kennedy's brand new book, The Simplicity of Healing, from It's Supernatural Press, plus her three-part audio CD teaching, The Simplicity of Healing, exclusive for our It's Supernatural TV audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9464. Through Dr. Sandra Kennedy's brand new book, you will receive the supernatural keys that unlock the door for you to step into freedom from disease and step into the abundant life which Jesus provided for you. Through it, you will be inspired to believe God for the impossible as you read Sandra's personal healing testimony. Learn how to enact the power of God's Word so you can conquer anything and everything the enemy sends your way and continue to walk in victory all the days of your life. Understand how to clear every obstacle keeping you from receiving your miracle. Receive a list of healing scriptures that you can pray and confess to receive your own healing breakthrough. Receive an impartation of persistent, tenacious faith to help you access every promise of God for your life. These principles apply to every area of your life, including health, emotions, family, finances, relationships, employment, protection, and more. You will also receive her three-part audio CD teaching, The Simplicity of Healing, exclusive for our It's Supernatural TV audience. Through her teachings, you will learn that receiving your healing is not complicated. Learn the keys of believing and speaking out loud God's God's Word, coming into agreement on how to act upon His promises for your life. Discover how to activate God's Word and experience His healing power. One of our readers, she's been reading books now about healing as she listened to the CDs, as she read this brand new book, The Simplicity of Healing Instantly Healed. This is how you do it our brand new book and three CD series. Don't miss out on getting Dr. Sandra Kennedy's brand new book, The Simplicity of Healing, from its Supernatural Press, plus her three-part audio CD teaching, The Simplicity of Healing, exclusive for our It's Supernatural TV audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9464. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 2827. Please specify offer number 9464 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Some of you are, are trying to wrap your mind around this concept. It's so simple, yet so profound. The healer, not a little bit of the healer. The healer is living within you. You don't have to run to some place. He's in you. You talk about, and this is so important, the power of agreement. What do you mean by that? Agreeing with God. You're going to be agreeing with somebody. 
Right. You're either going to agree with the doctor, thank God for good doctors, but you're going to either agree with the doctor or you're going to agree with your symptom. You're going to agree with something. So you need to start agreeing with the, with the Word of God or get somebody to agree with you. All right, but do you deny your symptoms? No. You, you deny the right for them to be there. I see. Yeah. You, you don't deny them, but you deny, you don't have a right in my body. I'm not saying you aren't there. I'm saying you don't have a right. I do, I do not. Now remember, a symptom is not a sickness. Your mouth can make it a sickness. You're just describing the power of agreement in reverse. Absolutely. Totally. All right. Uh We have readers that read. We get manuscripts before they become books. Right. We got a manuscript in, Mm -hmm. your manuscript, Mm -hmm. and this has never happened before because our readers read lots of books on healing. Right. This woman was facing surgery, Mm -hmm. and after reading your book, something clicked. And she did need surgery. Let's have Lori tell you for herself. I was experiencing excruciating pain in my shoulder and was diagnosed after an MRI with a torn rotator cuff. The doctor actually said it was hanging by a thread and I would need surgery. I'm sorry to tell you this, but you're going to need surgery. While I was reading The Simplicity of Healing, it connected with me on a personal level that changed my mindset concerning my own healing. I already had knowledge of the principles of healing, but it helped me to see where I had head knowledge but wasn't letting it get deep into my heart and spirit. While reading this book, God revealed to me the moment I came into agreement with the symptoms and how the symptoms actually became a condition because I came out of agreement with what God has said and came into agreement with the enemy. I repented when I realized what I had done and immediately the pain left my shoulder. Look, God healed me. What? Yes. Do you know, Sandra, as she was talking about what happened, I could feel, I could feel the presence of God mm-hmm. coming. I could too. What's going to happen to our people that are watching right now? If they grab hold of it and will grab hold and begin to agree with God and thank Him with gratitude, the healing power of God that is already in them will begin to be released inside of them, pushing out that sickness and disease. But they have to continue to Praise God. Thank you, Lord God. Most people know the principles in their head. S- same thing she was saying. And, and, but it dropped down inside of her, and it became real to her, and it became more real than the problem on the outside. And she, you begin to say, you know, if you will do it, if, if, if people will do it, if they would just begin to say, thank you, Lord, that I am healed. Thank you that you're doing this in my life. Thank you, Father God, that the healing power is in me. I agree with you. You said I'm healed, so bless God, I'm healed. You know, you've got to, you got to get an agreement with somebody. I'm going to agree with you, God. Okay, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> but again, one of your staff people, director of ministry, yeah. Develops cancer. How, yeah. how bad a cancer? Well, there's no such, such thing as a good yeah. cancer. Well, she how totally covered. Totally, the, the, the mass was just all the way across her stomach, just totally that way. She just happened to be a nurse, too. And she, she uh, said that the word is more powerful than a two edged sword. And so she went in and let the word become a scaffold to her. And she spoke to the, to the cancer and believed God to cut that cancer out. No pain, not, the pain did not leave. I mean, she, she was hurting just as bad every time she'd go back to the doctor. That took, that took raw faith. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the, pain, the pain did not leave until the day she got the full report that, that she was totally cancer-free. And she never had surgery now. She never had surgery. Are many people with cancer healed in your organization? Yes. The number one healing is cancer. I mean, we get calls from all over the world. We teach people exactly what I'm teaching here, how to believe God, how to get in agreement with God, how to expect God to keep His Word, how to expect God to do what God says He has done. And most of us believe that we've got to get God to do something. And it's a whole different concept when you're praising Him that He's already done it. Do you know what I'm hearing? And I'm going to shout it to you. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Never. Never give up. Never give up. Amen. Amen. 
Sandra Kennedy's lip was accidentally bitten off by her pet dog. The doctor's prognosis was that her lip and mouth would be severely deformed, even if she would have had multiple surgeries. Instead, Sandra applied the supernatural keys God gave her to believe and confess God's promises, and God supernaturally healed her, even restoring her lip without surgery. Now she wants to impart to you how simple it is for you to receive your healing. Call now and get Dr. Sandra Kennedy's brand new book, The Simplicity of Healing, from its Supernatural Press, plus her three-part audio CD teaching, The Simplicity of Healing, exclusive for our It's Supernatural TV audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9464. Through Dr. Sandra Kennedy's brand new book, you will receive the supernatural keys that unlock the door for you to step into freedom from disease and step into the abundant life which Jesus provided for you. Through it, you will be inspired to believe God for the impossible as you read Sandra's personal healing testimony. Learn how to enact the power of God's Word so you can conquer anything and everything the enemy sends your way and continue to walk in victory all the days of your life. Understand how to clear every obstacle keeping you from receiving your miracle. Receive a list of healing scriptures that you can pray and confess to receive your own healing breakthrough. Receive an impartation of persistent, tenacious faith to help you access every promise of God for your life. These principles apply to every area of your life, including health, emotions, family, finances, relationships, employment, protection, and more. I wanted to write something that to, when somebody read it, I believe healing will take place as they read the book. You know, most people are trying to get healed, and Jesus has already healed us. And that's the problem. And Jesus says that by His stripes, you are already healed. You will also receive her three-part audio CD teaching, The Simplicity of Healing, exclusive for our It's Supernatural TV audience. Through her teachings, you will learn that receiving your healing is not complicated. Learn the keys of believing and speaking out loud God's Word, coming into agreement on how to act upon His promises for your life. Discover how to activate God's Word and experience His healing. Power. One of our readers, she's been reading books now about healing. As she listened to the CDs, as she read this brand new book, The Simplicity of Healing, she had something that she was facing, some pretty bad surgery over, instantly healed. I want you to walk in that same childlike faith. It's time to start over our brand new book and three CD series, The Simplicity of Healing. Don't miss out on getting Dr. Sandra Kennedy's brand new book, The Simplicity of Healing, from its Supernatural Press, plus her three-part audio CD teaching, The Simplicity of Healing, exclusive for our its Supernatural TV audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9464. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9464 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Robert Henderson, author of the Court of Heaven series. Did you know that God is passionate about you fulfilling your purpose? Join me as we learn how to unlock your destiny from the courts of heaven right here on It's Supernatural with Sid Roth.